which may cause different types of kidney injury whenever they are instituted in a cancer patient. Among the targeted agents, anti-VEGF agents, TKI, these are the most commonly used anti-cancer medications nowadays for different types of cancer and they are causing TA, BRAF inhibitors and ALK inhibitors, they may cause so what about immune checkpoint inhibitors or immunotherapy agents? Among these interferons is the most common target. Interferon may cause all the segments of nephros. It may cause membranous nephropathy, it may cause FLGS, it may cause the first light nephritis syndrome, it may cause MCD light presentation, even it may cause TMA. Now the causes, the causes are usually multifactorial. This slide is showing the part of the causes of AK and cancer patients. They may be related to cancer, the same things as like risk factors related to therapy and the center point is the TLS and TMA. Patient related causes among the patient related issues we have already i have already shown the previous slide that this may be age related issues elderly persons are more susceptible to have AKI if there is safety conditions hypovolemia nephrotoxic medications and comorbid conditions so cancer related issues this urinary tract obstruction might be a issue for developing AKI cancer patients direct tumor invasion to the kidney that may lead to AKI, multiple myeloma associated nephropathies, cancer induced hypercalcemia, TMA and paraneoplastic lobular sclerosis. This is the slide I particularly focused on this issue as uh, we all of the nephrologists uh, in our lifetime we have to deal with the patient with monoclonal gamopathy. For the monoclonal gamopathy or paraprotein, uh, paraprotein, how many OS paraprotein may cause kidney injury? Uh, I have tried to show it here. Circulating paraprotein, it may deposit in the tissues that may lead to development of amyloidosis, that may lead to fibrillary organized or non organized nephritis, even it may cause tubular injury. It may cause cast nephropathy, it may cause syphygian or TMA. Not necessarily monoclonal gamopathy always presents, will present to us with cast nephropathy. Treatment related causes, this is direct and indirect issues. Directly, a patient is, may, have, may have treated with radiation or local radiation or chemotherapy that may cause urinary tract obstruction. 
and indirect causes are related to tumor lysis syndrome, cytokine release syndrome, and drug induced tumor. So how can we diagnose a case of AK? Actually, the approach is the same. We have to go for first immunosis, risk factor stratification, baseline creatinine values, ultrasound and imaging, imaging. Even a patient may have to go for kidney biopsy. In cancer patient, the study has revealed that biopsy is comparable to normal people in perspective of safety profile. <coughs> Treatment of cancer. This is a glimpse of the main issues. Firstly, we have to have deep knowledge about risk factors and causes of AKI. Then we are we should focus on some preventive measures. The cornerstone of prevention is the most uh, cornerstone of the prevention is the adequate hydration that is the most important issues. <coughs> Avoidance of nephrotoxic medications, correction of anemia and disease electrolytemia, contrast exposure should be minimized and some preventive measures should be taken whenever a contrast agent is contemplated in a cancer patient. As well as most difficult issues is dose adjustment in pre-existing CKD or AKI patients. Workup, determination of the baseline creatinine, electrolytes urine analysis, ultrasound, kidney biopsy, and probably we need biomarkers. Treatment, comprehensive evaluation, and dependent, depending on its cause. Follow-up timing depends on anti cancer medications and the oncologic potential which we are dealing. I will try to focus on different aspects of treatments regarding the different medications. Treatment of post renal nephropathy, we know this is post obstructive nephropathy or obstructive nephropathy. The only hope is the relief of obstruction by surgical procedures, either ureteral stenting or urinary diversion procedure by PCF. What about treatment of cast nephropathy? Main part is adequate hydration in combination with early initiation of chemotherapy agents to reduce the serum free light chain burden. Commonly used chemotherapy regimens are proteasome inhibitors in combination with different agents like thalidomide, corticosteroids, pilcristine and adriamycin. What about treatment about treatment related to uh, hypercalcemia induced AKI? Here, the main point is to ensure adequate hydration. The second issue, we have to use calcium lowering agents, particularly bisphosphonates, and glycine inhibitors, calcitonin, and sinacalcins, even corticosteroids. At the same time, we have to look for any medication that are causing elevated calcium level, particularly vitamin D containing medications, vitamin D analogs, vitamin A, thiazides, and lithium. Probably with a nephrologist, are very much familiar of managing hypercalcemia because we know it's a medical emergency. Regarding bisphosphonates and other agents, I try to focus on some issues. Pamidonacin is commonly used and it is recommended for metastatic hypercalcemia. Among the bisphosphonates, zoledonic acid, it is used but it should be avoided those are having creatine clearance less than 30. Pamidonic, it is not studied in cancer patients but it has a bit little renal profile safety. Danosumab, it can be used in any sort of 
kidney failure patients. Sinacalcent, malignancy associated hypercalcemia, except parathyroid carcinoma, no other studies has proven that sinacalcent is effective in cancer related hypercalcemia. Calcitonin, it can be used in acute setting, but it has potential disadvantage of having tachyphyl excess. Regarding glucocorticoids, yes, they have a role of steroids. Hydrocortisone can be used 300 to 400 milligram per day for 3 to 5 days. Treatment related API. What about mechanical injury? Yes, we can minimize the mechanical injury preoperatively by a joint collaboration between nephrologist and surgeon. Cisplatin induced nephrotoxicity, nephrotoxicity we are uh, very much careful and we are very much worried sometimes about this drug. Actually, there is no specific treatment for cisplatin induced nephropathy. Only one medication approved by FDA is amifostine. That is not the treatment, only for the prevention of cumulative dose toxicity of platinum. <coughs> methotrexate, the renal toxicity increases whenever methotrexate is used, whenever more than 500 milligram per meter square. To minimize the toxicity, before initiating FTX, we have to have proper hydration and urinary alkalinization. The pH of the urine should be kept more than 7. Liquorine rescue therapy, it is used, it is to be used not more than 40 hours beyond exposure of FTX. At the same time, we have to look for some concurrent medications that are folate antagonists like trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, we may have to look for ericides and other contrast agents. Immune checkpoint inhibitors. No evidence has been found till date regarding the treatment of immune checkpoint inhibitor associated AKI. The only treatment is to stop the medications. But some Case studies has found that there may have role of methylpedicillin, but dose and duration of methylpedicillin is not defined yet. Cartices, regarding these agents usually cause CRS and TLR. As because it is related to CRS, so IL-6 inhibitors and steroids may have role. Regarding TLS, I am going to focus on further. TLS, tumor lysis syndrome, probably we also may have to be clinical situations in lifetime being a nephrologist. This is Cairo Bishop criteria for defining TLS. The laboratory criteria are four. Among these two have to be present in 24 hours period. And TLS is to be diagnosed at least three days prior to the exposure of chemotherapy following seven days of exposure of chemotherapy. So total time frame is 10 days. TLS, not all the tumors, all the cancers are causing TLS. There are some risk stratifications. The highest risk is developing TLS in case of Barkett's lymphoma and lymphoblastic leukemia of advanced stage and ALL with high WBC count and high MDH. There are lower risk and there are only as well intermediate risk. How can we prevent? Yes, two medications are recommended for preventing TLS that is Pebustet Pemuxostat and allopurinol. Available two medications can be used to prevent the TLS. 
but in case of high risk group only last beauty case is recommended to lower the uric acid level in case of established tls what should you do the patient must be admitted in icu rrt should be initiated earlier their <coughs> correction of electrolyte abnormalities and vigorous hydration in that case established tls case we may consider single dose of 6 mg rasbuticus now the final part tma there are some differences of tma related to cancer and related to <coughs> usually cancer related tma occurs in case of metastatic cancer their mean is 56 years usually they are associated to dic and median duration of symptoms is 21 days but in case of chemotherapy induced tma usually they are younger is the duration of illness is usually 6 days and plasma chest therapy may not be may not be effective here whenever we are encountering a patient of tma in a cancer patient always you have to consider the drug which we are giving for anti cancer purpose the culprit drug must be stopped plasma exchange not so much helpful but in sometimes for adam starting deficiencies there it may help two case reports two case were reported for role of ecolizumab so this list actually this list is exhaustive the final part of my presentation uh, third dose modification is to be considered in case of renal failure whether it is existing or it is ckd uh, i am not going to the details of this dose modification uh, we may probably have to refer to the text for details in conclusions ek is common in cancer patient and it is multifactorial factors might be related to cancer might be related to patient might be related to therapy itself in cancer patients whenever they develop the care the treatment cost prognosis and ongoing treatment even future treatment plan is to be changed the multidisciplinary approach approach is essential to reduce the incidence of ak in cancer patients a close collaboration is needed between organ specialists and nephrologists this cornerstone of better management of patients thank you thank you for listening Thank you, Assistant Professor Dr. Abu Saleh Ahmed and Assistant Professor Dr. Omar Farooq Mia for your uh, nice presentation and giving us uh, the opportunity to learn about different aspects of PKI and how to manage them.